You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for June 15th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we are no longer a nuclear threat, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Yeah, no, we're good. The professional, I, I meant to say the, the professional left, we personally have gotten rid of our nuclear weapons. I see. Out in the cornfield. And we have beautiful beaches here in the cornfield as well. <laughs> we, might get a, we might get a second lake. We might not. We don't know. But you know what I'm jealous of? Kim Jong-un got an iPad yes, with a did. custom movie on it just yes, for it him. Did. Oh, it's so beautiful. My beautiful new movie. <laughs> oh, look at me. I'm so smart and beautiful. And really, I made the American president drag his pasty white ass across the Pacific mm -hmm. um, and come to me and mm -hmm. kiss my ass and do what I tell him to do and declare that we're no more no more war games. They're very expensive. They're terribly pricey. I thought, oh my gosh, they're very pricey. They're very expensive. We're going to save a lot of money by not having an army. That's true. I could agree more. I knew when I heard him say that, that the Pentagon would walk that back and that oh, yeah. the for military appropriations in the Congress is going to have none of that. No. There are a lot of American troops in South Korea. Yes, there and are. And they are being trained. For one thing, they're being sent to another country in part to sophisticate them, okay, yeah. to make them see that there's a big wide world out there that the U.S. military is responsible for. Yes. Like it or not, we protect American business interests around the world. The global That's, order. And that is part of the problem with outsourcing jobs is yes. they these American corporations can move wherever they want to to get the best tax break and the best labor costs and et cetera, et cetera. And the U.S. military will be there to protect them and, and get a tax cut for it. Right. Yes. They're not supporting yes. that. So here are all these troops who are there to be trained. To be, mm -hmm. it, we are get. Don't pretend we aren't getting something from that. They are being trained there, and here comes Donald Trump to say we're not going to train them anymore. <laughs> we're no. not going to use these exercises. These are scheduled things, right? And obviously, the two people in the world that don't like these training exercises and don't want trained U.S. military personnel in the Korean Peninsula are Kim Jong Un and Vladimir Putin. Yes. Yes. It becomes clearer and clearer to me and to everybody every single week that Donald Trump is simply doing what Vladimir Putin tells him to do. Yes. Yes. And and that's I mean just when when he launched from the G7 and just went on this long rambling mm -hmm. tirade about, you know, we used to be the G8 because I just learned that yesterday. You probably didn't know that, but there used to be a G8. <laughs> and then for some reason that no one understands Russia was kicked out <laughs> probably because, you know, it got to be a club where we could only have one person named Vlad, and there was a guy named Vlad. We decided no, we could only have one Vlad, or whatever reason. No one really knows. <laughs> no, everyone knows exactly why they got kicked out and why they're still out. Um, and yet, there is his. You know, this is this is Donald Trump is every dictator's pass around party favor. Yep. You know, he really is the guy from Memento who's being used. Other than the fact that the guy from Memento was being used because he had no ability to make memories. Mm -hmm. But who's being who's a, who's literally a drone, a stooge um, lined up by, you know, foreign dictators to do what they want him to do. And I do wonder what sort of what sort of blackmail they pass around among themselves. OK, now make him go to Korea. That'd be cool. They can do that. Now make him call Trudeau an asshole. That'd be now make him put tariffs on Canada. Oh, my God, this is so great. And. Again, if you were a fiction writer, if you're if you're making this shit up, you 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 would never believe it would have gotten as far as it has gotten. Yep. The yep. only fictional equivalent uh, in 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 the literature is Seven Days in May. Yes. Uh, what I can think up, and Seven Days in May is a military takeover of the U.S. government because the military thinks the president of the United States is being too weak on communists. Right. Too right. weak on Russia. So we need to take power away from him. And they, stage, they they almost get away with staging a coup, but it's this whole conspiracy to, to do governing in the back room, to take the president out of the picture and govern by direct military fiat. 
this literally is a and the, the the flag of the Kremlin flies over the White House today, and it's completely cool with 85, 90 percent of the Republican Party. Yep. That's the part that nobody would have ever written in a in a in a theme, in a, in a plot. I would have. Because I could have told these people, these people hate this country. They will side with anyone else against our country. They won't side with Muslims because they're brown and scary. But they will side with any other dictator, any other scumbag against this country. As long as that scumbag says liberals are bad and feminists are bad and foreigners are bad, um, boom. Um, and, and they'll cite Reagan for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, All right. It's probably. It's probably time to introduce our new sponsors. We have some new sponsors. You go right yeah. ahead and read, tell us about the latest sponsor we have. Well, we have a new presenting sponsor. Uh, they're doing fake very sponsor. good business. Yes. It's a big one. It's, an, it's a fake sponsor. These are all fake sponsors. Uh, we make them up uh, hoping that eventually the, the universe will catch up with this brilliant business ideas that we give away for free every week on this podcast. Um, this this new week, uh, this week, our presenting sponsor is Shut Your Hole, Potemkin Staffing Services. This is a very important niche market that is often overlooked in the in the big, big world of business. So you come to work one day and Phil Griffin says you absolutely must hire Bill Crystal's idiot son-in-law to go on your TV show or, you know, something really bad will happen. But Human Resources says you have to interview at least a couple of actual qualified candidates before you can put little Matthew Continetti on the payroll or you can get sued. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Huh? Well, that's when the smart manager calls, shut your whole Potemkin staffing services. You see, the Great Recession created millions of barely employed part-time contingent workers who are so desperate to pay for their family's health insurance that, they, that for a couple of bucks and validated parking, they will sit through job interviews, including drug testing and polygraph testing, for jobs for which they are, A, incredibly well qualified, but B, which they know for sure they will never, ever get. They will humiliate themselves for a couple of dollars. So the next time you have, a, you have, you have to hire the boss's half-wit nephew or the COO's mistress, and you need to avoid unpleasant audits and depositions, call the marketing-making visioneers and vertical synergy integrators at Shut Your Whole Potemkin Staff Services. Shut Your Whole Potemkin Staffing Solutions. Because principles are someone else's problem. That seems very autobiographical, Drift Glass. It's a, it's a little bit. It's a little touch. <laughs> you know, if I can't take my situation and make a, a profit off of it, make a make a, an example for the kids, uh, really, why 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 do this show at all? Oh. Um, uh, our other sponsor is the Rube Tube. This yeah. is another new fake sponsor we have. It this is. week's show brought to you by the Rube Tube. Are you tired? Of your stream of state-run propaganda being interrupted by double-plus ungood information that makes your head hurt? Well, the same team of brilliant customer fulfillment vertical synergy integrators who brought you Tizzy, the online dating app for hysterics, now brings you the Rube Tube. The Rube Tube applies state-of-the-art heuristic AI filters and Heisenberg compensators to eliminate every trace of irritating bad thinkfulness from your news broadcasts, the Rube Tube. It's Fox News without Shepard Smith. Okay, <laughs> I just yeah. I like those both so much. They're so good. We have a real big stable of fake sponsors at this point. I think maybe yeah. one day we do an entire fake sponsor show with fake, fake interviews. Sponsor show. <laughs> um, but you know, life has to calm down, and I don't see that happening anytime no, soon. No, we were just going to. Uh, this is going to be an hour long knitting show. A couple no. of years ago. That was going to be no. the, the plan with some no. science fiction thrown in. But no, <laughs> life intervened and here we are. And I, I want to express appreciation for that uh, short story title you came up with about Korea because we're going to move on uh -huh. uh, to other things. But The Last Korean War Orphan Tells All is a, sounds like a really great short story. <laughs> yeah. I've, had, I've had some spare time on my hands this week. Donald yeah. Trump uh, yeah. says that, there, that thousands of parents of uh prisoners of war in north korea i'm not sure if it was thousands but yes he yes. did say thousands, thousands? No, oh that's thousands. awesome that's awesome he that makes it said thousands yes mm -hmm. uh are wanting him to get the remains of their children back yes who died in the korean war the parents of korean war dead right are, are begging moments. him to please uh yes. get get the remains of their loved ones back uh -huh. Well, uh, and we the people did the math, not Donald Trump, but no, other people no. did the math and discovered that these parents of Korean War veterans 
at best would be 101 years old. So yeah. thousands of 101 year olds or and older, older mm-hmm. <laughs> are uh, begging Donald Trump to mm-hmm. return the re- to to negotiate return of the remains of uh, their loved ones. Well, one and, of them definitely. I mean, the the, the uh, heroic uh, Korean War hero, Manny Peoples. Many peoples, uh, yes. many peoples, many peoples <laughs> many tells peoples him. Has like thousands of children, though, he does. right? <laughs> and they're always in the White House. They're always talking to Donald Trump. Many peoples tells me many things, and and they're all true because he told me that. Yeah. And that story went uh, just passed right through the conservative media. Nobody commented on it. Nobody pointed out. We're all laughing our asses off, going, you know, because. We don't really need any more confirmation. In fact, we're kind of sick up to our mm-hmm. throats with confirmation mm-hmm. of how uh, just blatantly brain dead this mm-hmm. this white this orange fire demon is, this racist asshole is, just dead from the neck up. Uh, but his followers are worse. It's very much like the Sean Hannity you know, viewers. Yeah, uh, Sean Hannity can sit there and gripe all day long uh, about Barack Obama meeting with foreign dictators. And then turn right back around and fawn all over. Because mm-hmm. at no point will anyone out inside the Fox News bubble take two pieces of Sean Hannity video and put them side by side and say, wait a minute, this is making cut. A lot of people have, people have been doing that this week, though. Sure, outside. A lot of people outside now. of the bubble. Outside. Yes, outside but the bubble. Yep. That's why you hire the good people at the Rube Tube. The Rube Tube won't <laughs> let this shit that. get to you. Yeah, right. No, no, you'll never have to worry about it. Because sometimes it sneaks in. Sometimes it accidentally comes over the transom. Or you right. catch it out of the corner of your eye. Some liberal decides to comment over on Hannity's Twitter stream, and that's just not fair. You walk into a, I don't know, a, a, a restaurant at a, a mid-priced uh, motel or hotel, and CNN is playing. Uh, oh, that in, fake in news, area. yeah. And you, and, you, yeah. And it's so funny. It's so Trump view. <laughs> Trump voters are so stupid that it's just funny at some point. Yeah. And so they put up a funny thing about how stupid Trump voters are, and then they freak out and, and throw their eggs at the TV and storm away. Well, with the Rube Tube, you don't have to worry about that. It just filters all that stuff out. It's all uh, gone. Don't worry about it. I want to add one more one more detail to what Donald Trump said about the thousands of Korean Was it millions? soldiers. Yeah. No. He claimed, quote, thousands of parents of fallen Korean War soldiers asked him for their children's remains while on the campaign trail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Some spry. Those are some. Pri- I don't even know what the term is. It's centenarians. I guess whatever so. a hundred and twenty yeah. year old is. I'm uh-huh. not really sure. Um, yeah, it's Deca something. Um, but like- yeah, a lot of spry hundred and twenty year olds showed up at those rallies, put their little red hats on, scurried up to stage all at the same time, and begged him. Now it's quite possible that Donald Trump does not understand the difference between the Korean War and the Vietnam War. Desert Storm. <laughs> Suffice it to say, uh, 63 million idiots voted for this guy, and most of them think he's doing a great job. Um, and that's the problem. Hey, hey Drift Class, I'm going to ask you to put on your media analysis hat. Oh, man, really? I don't yeah. want to put on my media and analysis hat. Talk about, and talk about the ongoing feud now between Bob Corker and Charlie Sykes. Oh, it's so sad, Blue Gal. It's so <laughs> very sad. You know, when, 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 when kids fight, you know, it's just – it's so very sad. I would like to uh, read, because I just transcribed verbatim what mm-hmm. um, Bob Corker said. Okay. And I would like to read it because um, Charlie Sykes's uh, comments followed this. Everyone was going, he said cult, he said cult, he said cult. That's not what I heard. I heard the most mush-mouthed, meandering, whatever the hell coming out of this guy's mouth. That he never said the word Republican. He never said mm-hmm. the word Trump. It was really just like... Oh my God! You've had one too many electroshock treatments. You don't know how to put words together anymore. And what's your job okay, again? Read it to us. Okay. What did he say? Word this is, is U.S. Senator Bob US, Corker. Uh, U.S. Senator Bob Corker uh, uh, leaving, retiring. U.S. <laughs> Senator Bob Corker. We're in yeah. a strange place. I mean, it's almost uh, uh, you know been a. It's becoming a cultish thing, isn't it? Um, uh, and uh, there's a long pause. It's uh, uh, it's not a good place for any party to uh, to to end up. With a cult-like situation, uh, as it relates uh, to uh, to 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 a president that uh, happens to be of uh, purportedly of of the same party, that's a fucking U.S. senator. Yep, talking about a fascist who runs his party because his mm-hmm. party loves mm-hmm. 
And this is the this is the bravest U.S. senator in terms right. of standing up to Trump this is because he's on got. his way out. And this is the strongest statement he could make about uh, Trump's followers not caring about policy, not caring about results, not caring about anything, just mm-hmm. following the personality of Donald Trump to the yeah. end because they like the racist bullying that he's doing. Right. Yep. And this is the best they've got. This yep. is the best Republican Party can field. And he's that bad. He's that cowardly and weak-willed and sniveling. And he's being applauded for his – except by Charlie Sykes, uh, who's who's a brave soul, who's willing to step out there and criticize this man for – and this is the part where you have to sort of explain the joke for one second. Charlie Sykes spent his entire fucking career as the Wisconsin Rush Limbaugh. Until about 10 minutes ago, Charlie Sykes – was Rush Limbaugh in Wisconsin. And then the wind shifted real violently and Donald Trump tore the mask off of Charlie Sykes' Republican Party and showed us the world, showed the world that it was a giant shit pile of misogynists and racists. Pretty much everything liberals have been saying for decades the Republican Party is turned out to be true. So Charlie Sykes suddenly became a liberal blogger, except he doesn't acknowledge the Republican Party was bad before Donald Trump showed up. He's one of the never Trumpers, which basically rip off the entire liberal critique of the Republican Party while leaving aside the entire history of the Republican Party. Trump just showed up, magically turned all of Charlie Sykes' friend into monsters, and he has no idea how the fuck that happened, but he's very much like a paycheck. Can I have my money now, please? So Charlie Sykes made a shit ton of money being Rush Limbaugh and turn and turning his party into a monster machine, and now he's making money going, I wonder whatever the fuck happened to my Republican Party. So Charlie Sykes has the gall to to mock Bob Corker by saying, yeah, but, you know, if only he'd been warned about all of this. Wow. And I just sat there going, oh, honey, could you get me that videotape? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes on to say, you know, Bob Corker. And then Nicole Wallace is giggling hysterically in the background. Because she yeah, well, she, well she, says, she says that Charlie Sykes and she are sharing therapy money. They're yeah, both heroes. So- They're both heroes, blue gal. Yeah, Um, I'm glad uh, Charlie Sykes, I'm glad he's speaking out. But, you know, it would have been nice if he would have spoken out earlier and more consistently instead of flip flopping back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then Mm -hmm. he he goes on and on about how how unbelievable it is that the Trumpists and the president take somebody out and he says hangs them from a lamppost and says, "Okay, who wants to be the next critic? You know, brings the entire weight of the right of the Republican Party and the presidency down on a specific individual critic and destroys them. And Charlie and, Sykes. And thinks, he's, he's talking about Appalachian Trail. That's who he's talking yes, about. Yes. Right? Well, he's talking about Bob Corker and he's talking about Appalachian mm-hmm. Trail. He's talking about anybody who crosses Donald Trump. Anybody who, yeah. who, who stands up against this guy gets. But what he means is any Republican who stands up against him. Because mm-hmm. Charlie Sykes' book is still perfectly okay to demonize and slander liberals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's when I said, you know, if Charlie Sykes hadn't blocked me on Twitter a long time ago for pointing out these little inconvenient facts about his past, I would ask him where he thinks the Republican Party, the Republican base voters ever got the idea that it was okay to drop a house on a critic of the president of the United States. And that I play for him. The movie trailer from Shut Up and Sing, which is the Dixie Chicks, which is exactly what the Bush administration and the Republican Party did to people who talk mean about George Bush for eight fucking years. And Charlie Sykes was there the whole time raking in the fucking dough. So, you know, Charlie, you know where they learned it? They learned it from you. And the fact that Nicole Wallace sits there giggling her head off instead of saying, you know what, Charlie, here's the problem. This is the shit that we put liberals through for the last 25 years. You want to go back 25 years and talk about Rush Limbaugh saying that gay men had it coming, that we should keep a few liberals alive as living fossils so we could point out to children what dirty, commie, filthy, bastard, American-hating motherfuckers those liberals are? That's been your party for your entire life, Charlie, and you were warned. So whatever hell you think Bob Corker belongs in, you belong right next to him up to your chin in the same burning shit. But, of course, it's on TV and and it's under Nicole Wallace's aegis, so we're not going to mention any of this. Mm -hmm. Because it's very inconvenient to Mm -hmm. talk about that. Instead, we're going to laugh about it and talk about, isn't it a shame Bob Corker didn't see Jesus uh, five minutes sooner? Because then he'd be right with God. Then he'd be on that panel with the rest of them wondering whatever the hell happened to my great Republican Party. 
I want to add to that that Ronna Romney McDaniel, the chairman, chairwoman of the Republican Party, last night tweeted, and I am reading from her tweet, complacency is our enemy. Anyone that does not embrace the at real Donald Trump agenda of making America great again will be making a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the never Trumpers came out in full force saying uh, all, all four of them, all four of them. Well, yeah. Rick Wilson, yeah. Bill Crystal, Megan McCain, you know, right. all right. said, you know, Rick Wilson's when are you going to be offering a an official Trump brand we can put on our skin and sear into our bodies as a sign of loyalty? You know, because that's that's right. where we're at. Uh, mm-hmm. But I liked what um a writer for Deadspin magazine, David Roth, replied to Rana, uh, Rana Romney McDaniel and said, throw me in a fucking gulag, queen. <laughs> 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 uh, but it is it is it's it's that bad. This is how they are going to hold on to power is mm-hmm. the threat of violence against the general population. And they're showing what that looks like. With children. Yes, they are. Yes, they uh, are. That's how they're doing it. That's how they're making an example for all of us. And this is something that I don't think is being talked about because we are uh, so outraged and emotional about how uh, immigrant children are being treated. But I want to mm-hmm. warn you guys, this is also aimed at the general population that uh, we've built these uh, Walmart camps and these places where these kids are incarcerated. We don't have any, we don't aren't accountable to Congress for this. We aren't accountable to anybody. We can set policy as to whether um, ICE will come to your door and take you away. And right now we have the pretext of, um, are you an immigrant with uh, some misdemeanor in the past 25 years? It's, It's black sites for babies. Yeah. 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 But this is a, this is definitely an overt message to everybody. Uh, we will find a way to lock you up. And, and Ronna McDaniel is part of that message. When she says, Is she a member of a famous political family? She's Mitt Romney's daughter. Oh, that's right. She is, isn't yeah. she? Yeah. She wants everybody to forget that. But uh, mm-hmm. no, she is. Um, okay. Well, and in a step in that direction, the Department of Homeland Security. Mm-hmm will now be dedicating an entire office to stripping U.S. citizenship from naturalized, naturalized Americans. Citizens. Right, right. Who lied on their immigration, about their immigration status. This used to be something they reserved for war criminals. Yep. Now they're going to make sure anybody who, sne- anybody who had a pre-existing condition mm-hmm. that they might have fudged about mm-hmm. on their immigration, gone. Your citizenship has been taken away from you and you're gone. And they're coming for you guys. They're coming for you. And if you don't think that's true, you're not paying any attention. And this is the authoritarian regime in place now. And well, okay, I'm I'm not going to get too upset because this is a podcast. I don't want to lose it here, but I'm well, I'm scared. I'm, I'm scared, too. And and I'm I'm uh, deeply concerned. Um, I still have great faith in the majority of the public. Yeah. Um, but I do know that when you know when the shit comes down, about a third of the people are going to find uh, the tops of their shoes mighty interesting, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and are going to look the other way, and they're going to go to their garage on the power tools and just start you know putting lathing some wood to uh, drown out the screams of their neighbors being dragged yeah. away. Yeah. Because they don't want to get involved. Because you know, it may, the, maybe it's both sides, blue mm-hmm, gal. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's both. Mm-hmm. And this is. And I'm this not is a political I, I'm person, work, you know. I'm not. I'm not a political person. Yeah. Well, I'm working on an epic two part post because I said, I, like I said, I have a lot of time on my hands <laughs> now um, about why the Republican Party cannot save itself. Hmm. Um, the, the question it can only again, be is, saved by a complicit media that allows it to rebrand as no labels and Tea Party. Yeah, it can be propped up forever, but it, it cannot. It is, there's no internal mechanism left inside the Republican Party that will allow it to save itself. The, the question now is simply: when the crash comes, how many people is it going to hurt, and how mm-hmm. long will it be until some other thing grows up in its place? But it's it, it, the collapse has already come. There, there is no more Republican Party. There hasn't really been a Republican Party as a sane, rational, uh, adult political party in this country for decades. Yeah. 
Um, and you and I notice it. People like Charlie Pierce notice it. He wrote about it today. Um, but it's the it's the media's little bunker. I don't mean the conservative media. I mean the Beltway centrist Washington D.C. Mm-hmm. New York media lives in a terrified little bubble where they if they just wish hard enough and clap hard enough, then never Trump or centrist Tinker Bell will save them. And so they keep giving credit to people who have absolutely no business being anywhere near anything, having their opinions recorded for any reason. I mean, there is no other profession I can think of where being publicly wrong about everything for your entire fucking career actually qualifies you to be promoted and be given a raise on an even bigger platform. And there's a this I, I beat up on uh, on columnist E.J. Dion a couple of weeks ago, but I'm going to give him some credit because he conducted this fairly wide ranging interview uh, in the Democracy Journal with four never Trumpers, um, David Frum, Peter w- uh, Weiner, Liz Mayer and Jennifer Rubin. And it is a thing to behold. I- I'll put the link up, but it's part of my link. Uh, part of my thing. Only Jennifer Rubin. Of all of the, and mind you, these are the people who are the furthest away from the Republican Party at this moment. Mm-hmm. These are the mm-hmm. ones who who are who are the ones who are like, oh, if there's just if there's like some sourdough, a little bit of sourdough we could use to make another party over here somewhere. These are the these are the only people who who out of this entire shit pile, who who count themselves as salvageable and sane and reasonable enough to properly critique their own party. Um, but when asked a blunt, direct question uh david frum was asked is trump an aberration or is he the logical conclusion of what happened to conservatism over the last 20 or 30 years what was david frum's immediate response both immediate. sides it's very possible that a trump-like figure could have arisen on the american left no. because trump-like figures have arisen on the left-leaning parties in europe all frum wants to talk about is europe uh-huh. he doesn't want to talk about america he doesn't, he doesn't want to address the question he was asked he wants to talk about poland and brexit and anything else but the Republican Party that he's been a part of and the conservative movement that he's been responsible for his entire life. And it goes right down the list. Yep. Um, Liz Mayer asked the same question. She says, I think it's very dangerous for Democrats to get into a position of saying that it can't happen in their party. It absolutely can. And, it, and these, these are the good guys. <laughs> these are the people who are, who are the, the voice of hope and reason that somewhere at the end of this horrible, shitty tunnel of aw- awfulness this this horrible trump thing there's some decent people left inside there somewhere some little flex of dna from bill buckley who can reconstitute no there isn't there aren't um jennifer rubin is willing to, is the one who's willing to say no vote democratic yep <laughs> vote democratic yep. vote democratic get these fuckers out of here this has been a long time coming um I'm, I'm doing the article a disservice because there are points at which they agree. There are points at which they say, well, I agree partially, but you remember, remember all the mean ads the liberals ran in 2000. And, and <sighs> so it's all equivocation. Yeah. And what about is a deflection? No, but, 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 and I think Jennifer Rubin has come to the conclusion that a lot of others have come to, which is mm-hmm. if you defeat Donald Trump at the polls, that is the best and easiest way to avoid bloodshed. Yes. That, yes, it is. You know, People, people, if you remove Donald Trump from office, I do believe, I agree with Athena, there are going to be people that are going to pull guns out of their garages and yes, start will. shooting. They will. They will. And, and I think there is an unspoken terror of that, uh, yes. that there are some people that just can't handle. They are in a cult, literally, and, yes. Yes, and they are. will defend Donald Trump to the end. But if Donald Trump simply loses election after election after election and it and the narrative isn't winning, hashtag winning, you're going to be so sick of winning. Mm-hmm. That is a softer blow in a way. And it's also the election. You're you're using the tool that got Donald Trump supposedly into power to get him out of power. And so. Well, OK, now I have a provocative question to ask you. Sure. What happens when he loses and he says it was rigged? It was all rigged. They stole it. They stole your democracy from you. Yeah, the liberals in the deep state stole it from you. This election doesn't count because they stole it. I'll from tell you what. Well, any Republican who was reelected in that election mm-hmm. will have to stand up and say, no, Donald, it's not true. <laughs> OK. You know, I, he's going to find a way to get what he wants. Yes. Which, which is which I really think is his own Fox show. I don't I don't think he wants to be president. I still don't think he wants to be president. He's playing it for what to get what he wants, which is adoration from his base. Mm-hmm. And 
he can have adoration from his base on Fox, right? Well, he he's going to so need if that, he loses. That might if be he what loses he loses. And- I'm going to say that might be might be what he wants. What he eventually is going to need is twenty billion dollars and a country with no extradition treaty. Right. Right. And right. those two right. are not compatible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when he decides that if I if I have to flee the country or I have to stay here and burn it all down. Yeah. That's what well, I worry we're, about. We're kind of getting into fantasy now, and I'm not sure how it's going to unfold, but uh, we got to vote him out. I'm. Oh, yeah. No, no. Do keep doing the right thing. Keep registering. Yeah. Call. You know, this is this is something that Joan Walsh uh, had on Twitter uh in the last two days, and a lot of people have. I'm not just saying her. But here's the number. Here's how you contact your representative. Make sure that right. they know you're furious, that you want them sticking their big noses inside those you know, little kid um, black site gulags. You mm-hmm. want the press in there. You want your Congress people in there dr- shutting the shit down, holding hearings, demanding answers. Uh, even if you're out of power, you can make an awful lot of noise and a big nuisance of yourself. And if you're a senator or a congressman, uh, it's real hard to mace you and budge you. Um, mm-hmm. It's easy to do for an, an average citizen. It happens every day. If, if, it, if you're African American, it happens ten times a day. But if you're a, a, a node, if you're an elected official, if you're Bullworth, <laughs> you know you do. You can make the cops back off. You can just force them down by by the fact that you're an elected official. And there's a whole bunch of TV cameras behind you. And that's what our elected officials should be doing right now. They should be kicking doors in at these horrible little camps. And making sure everyone knows the Republican Party is for throwing kids into gulags because they hate foreigners and they're yep. coming for you next. Yep. Yep. And what I'm hearing in all of this, when when all of us are watching this and are horrified and are calling our congressman. And there was a woman on Twitter today saying, you know, I call my congressman's office all the time. And this time I just burst out crying. Mm-hmm. And my congressman's staff member said the congressman is not making a statement on this at this time, uh-huh. like they were a flight attendant. Right. You know, at this time, you have to get in the seat or seat and sit down and be quiet. Right. And she's sobbing on the phone about children getting locked up in gulags. Mm-hmm. And and she said the unreality of this whole situation was really dis- jarring. You know that. I'm crying about children being locked in gulags to somebody who's supposed to be working for my representative in Congress. Mm -hmm. And he turns into a flight attendant. Right. Deep breath, everybody. I have Um, some news from the uh, CEO of the Gallup organization. Yeah, she went to a a face to face, got out of the house, away from the computer and went to a talk. Yes. Uh, uh, CEO of Ga- the the Na- National Gallup organization, right? Yeah. The came, polling came to fresh off the the plane from New York or Germany or wherever he's coming from, and he's a funny guy. And he's he's pretty conservative, and but he acknowledged that Al Gore did in fact um, not invent the internet, but walked information from Vin Sir, uh, Vin Sir across the street to the Commerce Department and said, "This is amazing." Mm-hmm. Because the people who invented it had no idea what to do with it. They thought it was just a cool little thing that they could use for the military. And Al Gore immediately saw that this would change the world. Um, so he's per- he's willing to admit, you know, that that a past happened, history happened. Also, being the head of a polling company, you have a lot of numbers at your fingertips. Yeah. Uh, and, and one of the more interesting numbers, this is one that really did hit home with me very personally, but also with millions and millions of people out there, mm-hmm. is that he he's got a he's got his pet economist at the Gallup organization that is a genius who speaks, you know, one syllable, two syllable his time. And he knows everybody else. And he asked his pet economist, who's a genius uh, because he was flying home from whatever and saw three different newspapers, the wall street journal, New York times and the financial times, all of which said you know, covering the political spectrum, but all said we're in a recovery. Mm-hmm. And he asked his economist, are we in a recovery? He said, Oh no, 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 <laughs> no. And, and he said, well, why are they saying that? He goes, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So then he met with, you know, the I don't know who the guy was, but the 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 high priest of, of American economics, the Nobel Prize winning guy who other economists, they tremble when he's in their presence, when they're in his presence. Asked him the same question, got the same answer. Are we in a recovery? Oh, no, no. Uh, why do they keep saying that? I don't know. Mm-hmm. But every economist he talked to said, oh, no, we're not in recovery at all. Um, those millions and millions and millions of middle class jobs. And that's the point. Middle class jobs are working 30 hours a week or more with benefits, 
uh, fifty thousand to one hundred twenty thousand dollars, depending on where you live. Mm-hmm. A living yeah, wage, what's your a housing costs living are. wage. Right, right. You can you can you can buy a house, you can rent an apartment, you can raise a family, you have a future. Those jobs are gone. Yep, they're hollowed out. Yep, we are hovering into is an entirely different economy full of contingent workers and part-time workers and hourly workers who have no future at all, who are working for minimum wage, who, are, who have one or two or three degrees, are wildly overqualified for everything that they apply for, and who are being told in every way imaginable, we don't want you anymore. Mm-hmm. There is no future for you here at all. So yes, there is an unemployment rate of three point something or four point something. It's very, very low. And that's a good thing because higher is worse. But the jobs that came back are jobs that have no future at all. And everyone who works those jobs knows they have no future. They can't, mm-hmm. they can't rent an apartment. They can't pay their bills. They certainly can't pay for health care. There's no way for a couple uh, having that to, to buy a house, to start a future, to have a family. Um, that's the problem. And it's a much longer discussion for a different day. But it's, it's a solvable problem. But it won't be solved if we keep doing things. If, uh, you know what was not going to solve it? A big fucking wall and a giant tax cut. That will not solve the problem. Right. Right. Um, so just so you know, An infrastructure I do, bill might help to solve it. There yes. are things getting rid of austerity might help to solve There's, it. Oh, there are lots of things. Um, there, are lots there are lots of, of different things that we can do to solve it, but they aren't in the Republican playbook. I used this to is a Republican problem. This what has been created here is make no mistake, is a Republican problem. I, I used to run develop and run programs. Um, funded government programs that in a very small way solved this problem, specifically mm-hmm. targeted, specifically went after solving this problem. And and it shows some very good results. And those results were evident at the state level and were celebrated at the national level. Right. And then the recession came and my thing was shut down and I was out of work and that all got lost in the in the in the in the wash. Mm-hmm. But there mm-hmm. are ways to fix these are human made problems. They're not yeah. natural disasters. Um well, anyway. and when I think about our own situation and how fortunate we are to live in an area near a cornfield we are. where housing costs, overall housing costs are reasonably low mm-hmm. Com- compared to the coasts, you know, our, our mortgage is under $1,000 a month. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we're not paying in the... 300,000, 400,000, 500. You can get a decent house in Springfield for 150 grand. You can yeah. get a nice house with a yard. So that's where housing prices are. And, uh, but we, you said that to me last night. You said a decent middle class job is 50 to $120,000 a depending year. Depending on where you live. Yeah. Depending on where you live. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, yeah, at the at the low end of that scale, you and I together might have a good year and make that, right. you know, right. that's where we're at is both of us working can make that. And right. that's how most people are living right now. Most average Americans inside the the cornfield area, the, the flyover country world, they have their their son living with them who is making mm-hmm. a minimum wage job. Yeah. Dad's working mowing lawns and trying to start some sort of hammering business. Mom's working as a part-time nurse or phlebotomist or whatever. And, you know, thank God she's got a job in health care because right. – that mm-hmm. job is probably not going away. That's not going to be with, cyclical, right? It comes but with benefits. Sometimes. Yeah. But sometimes. if she's working, sometimes it does. Sometimes it mm-hmm. doesn't. And then and then you have Gary Cohen. And I want to talk about some Please. of these lifeboat builders right Please now. Do. There's two of them in particular I want to mention. Mm-hmm. Gary Cohen, who quit over tariffs. He didn't quit over Nazis are very good people. He no. quit over tariffs. Tariffs. And he took some time off. He's still not working full time. He's taken some time off to look at the world and the lay of the land. But he sat down with the Washington Post. It's, uh, it's, me, it's a little Gary time. He, a little me yeah, time. Yeah, taking a little Gary time mm-hmm. to talk about the lay of the land to talk about the economy and he's a little concerned that all these tariffs might wipe out the benefits from the massive tax cut isn't that a shame the tax cut was going to be great and spur growth Mm -hmm. but now we have these tariffs and that could help to you know diminish somehow the benefits of these tax cuts uh and so they asked him well tell us overall about what you think the american economy is is doing and jeff stein of the washington post tweeted gary cohen says that the American economy is super great minus wage growth because wages for most American workers are exactly flat. Yep. Quote, 
I'd like to see a little bit of wage growth. Yeah, not too much. Not too much. Don't get greedy. So as I said, I'd like to see a little bit of wage growth, says the man who's taking some time off to see the world after quitting the White House. Most U.S. households, and I emphasize most, could not pay right now to replace a broken washing machine this month. Yep. They don't have enough money on hand to replace, you know, clo clean to have clean clothes if their washing machine breaks. And, uh, you know, because I don't want to run for public office. I don't want to run for Congress. I, I tweeted, fuck these people, Drift Glass. Yeah. Because I just get a little mad sometimes. Well, sometimes. You, and, you know, you could run for public office as long as you're a Republican. You can say whatever the <laughs> fuck said, you fuck want. These people, I guess I can I can do that. You yeah, can, you sure. can say you can say and do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You can you can have a swastika. You can knit swastikas, honey, I and wear them around your neck. Uh -huh. you, can, you can conduct white pride worldwide dances in in. And, and in I'm a very good person <laughs> with your lover. And I get the Senate. I get the Senate seat. I can be and, a pimp and get and get a Republican uh, state house. You at least win the primary. You'd win the primary. <laughs> you win the primary. And you'd ease your way into a nice job at a think tank or a lobbying shop or something. And next mm -hmm. time around, once the bar has been lowered even further, uh, you're a shoe in. Because now you have name recognition. No one will remember what you did. They just remember that you exist. And mm -hmm. I like that lady. She said things that made me smile. I'll vote for her. Wait a minute. She was a Nazi? Well, I mean, a bad Nazi or a good Nazi? Because let's not be harsh. There can be good Nazis out there. Mm -hmm. And that's so you could just you could do that on, on the left. However, if you said something mean about Barack Obama or in, in the comment section of a blog, they wanted to know about it before they hired you. That's the standards. Um, I don't know that anybody ever got uh, fired, although they, they were pretty hard on Van Jones. Um, and, they, and you know, one doctored video was enough to lose you your job in the early days of the Obama administration until they figured out, oh, it's it's James O'Keefe and he's a lying sack of shit and this is all just a bunch of nonsense. Um, but Democrats were for eight years. This is the thing that stuns me. It still stuns me. These never Trumpers forget that Barack Obama was president like ten minutes ago. Yep, and forget how their party behaved the entire time he was president. It's like it never happened. And mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the average mouth breathing idiot who who does who who is going to buy and going to revel in. His brand new Rube tube. No, 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 no. I'm talking about I'm talking about Charlie Sykes. I'm talking about yeah. people that you see on television who are treated with respect and deference, who have trained themselves to forget that Barack Obama was ever president and their party ever sabotaged anything and that they stole Merrick Garland's seat and that yep. they were birthers and on and on and on and on. They've forgotten all of that. Just as before that, they forgot that George Bush was ever president. Just before that, they forgot that Bill Clinton was ever president. That's how they survive. And you can you can easily off these people uh, electorally and politically if you simply demand that the past be brought into the conversation. Right. right. But and that's, that's a very hard is. road to hoe right. in cable news. It you is. just don't get there. Uh, Trey Gowdy, Drift Glass. Oh, Trey Gowdy. trying He's to like... buy his way back into the good graces of Fox News. Oh, that's nice. Because, you know, nice he, he debunked the Spygate thing. He, that was a bridge too far for him. Yeah. And he was cut off. People thought that he was just being a traitor he's by a traitor. mentioning the spy gate as a lie. So uh, he's decided that with this IG report today uh, mm -hmm. that he's going to go nuclear on it. And oh, yeah. this is not the FBI our country needs. We uh -huh. why why were all these numerous failures uh, investigating potential Espionage Act violations by Hillary Clinton? That's not the story. That's, That's not, not the, story. the story. That's not the story. <laughs> and he, and Haystack, Haystack Calhoun, Hay, Haystack Gowdy, um, the man of a thousand hairdos, knows exactly that. He know yeah. this is the this is what infuriates me. Trey Gowdy is smart enough mm -hmm. to know that he needs to play to really, really stupid bigots to keep his job, mm -hmm. and so he will suck it down. He is yes. not running again. He wants no, to be a judge. He wants, right. Exactly. He wants to be a judge. He wants to, he has to be back in the good graces of the people that he obviously despises to get a lifetime appointment to the bench, which is all he wants. Right. So to do that, he has to suck up to Fox and suck up to Fox viewers. And that means mm -hmm. telling a whole bunch of mouth breathing bigots the lie they want to hear. Right. And right. Trey Gowdy absolutely will do that at the drop. They're, they're, these guys all have some gag reflex somewhere. Yeah. For Gary Cohen, it's tariffs. Again, yep. Nazis are fine. Tariffs are bad. Like, I have right. to leave because of tariffs. 
Um, uh, I don't know what Sarah Huckabee's is. Apparently, it's I don't know. Um, we don't know just yet. We don't saturation. know. Saturation. It's like it's like rock candy. At some point, one more spoonful of bullshit just turns into bullshit in front of you. Yeah. So she has to leave yeah. before that happens. Uh, but for most of these people, as as despicable as they are, there is some tripwire, mm-hmm. some basic reptilian sense of self-preservation that says, oh, must get out of here now. And they leave, but they don't, they don't, they leave their soul behind. So, so Gaudi will do whatever he needs to do to, to suck up to Fox viewers, because that's all he's got. Who's going to hire him outside of that universe? Who's going to give him any time, the time of day? I mean, CNN will do it, but CNN does everybody. So that's, that's no news. Uh, but, you know, welcome to the future, Trey Gaudi. Now, the real story about the IG report, as you know, Blue Gal, is that it basically exonerates Hillary Clinton right? and dings uh, James Comey real hard mm-hmm. for tr- for sabotaging her presidential campaign. Right. But there was no uh, – there was no uh, um, – impropriety in in the way she was investigated there was no no they didn't find anything the investigation and that he was the villain of that particular story and he was he, and he threw the election to Donald Trump basically but one little detail uh that just was delivered from the perfect irony department was that the IG report found that on numerous occasions James Comey had used a personal Gmail account yep. to conduct Wait for it. Official FBI business. And you can just end me right there. That's it. It's perfect. It's perfect. There aren't enough guillotines in the world. There Mm -hmm. aren't enough trials. There aren't enough drumheads in the world. We have to start uh, as soon as Democrats take the House. We need to have a special. Truth um, and Reconciliation Committee. No, no, no reconciliation. (laughs) No Uh, reconciliation. Truth truth, and then we'll talk. Yeah. Uh, But until we start getting some. Uh, public confession, mm-hmm. some some public atonement. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hear a fucking word. I want to hear Devin Nunez crying yeah. in the dock because he's going to be taken away from his family and from Donald Trump's loving embrace for the next 20 years. Mm-hmm. And then I want to hear him confess. And then we can talk yep. because there is nobody so far gone that they cannot be saved. It's simply beyond my capacity to imagine what it would take to save someone who's completely soul dead as mm-hmm. Devin Nunez. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. That's just me. I'm yeah. a bad person. <laughs> and also, this whole foundation thing, Trump Foundation thing, is everything yeah. that he accused Hillary Clinton <laughs> Foundation. Really? This yeah. just, you know, we waited until the last minute. We actually have to do some driving tonight. Yep. Um, and tomorrow's a very busy day. Uh, but uh, yeah, today delivered, hand delivered from the irony department. You want to go ahead and tell the, the just, good people just what happened? The, whole, the, the New York's uh, attorney general is suing the Trump Foundation. Uh, they would not let Trump close his foundation because they wanted to keep it open to investigate where this money was going. Uh, Trump used this foundation as his personal piggy bank to pay off settlements about the flag at some golf course, to uh, hand out money to veterans. He raised $5 million in one place and spent $2 million on his campaign, uh, redecorated golf clubs uh, with the money from his foundation. And uh, there are actually on Twitter um, some receipts okayed by Donald Trump that are clearly illegal uh, to (laughs) pay out of his foundation. Because, you know, it's money, it's for charity. Yeah, yeah, this is kind of charity, isn't it? Are we having like a charity event in this golf club next month? Okay, so redecorate the golf club and we'll just Mm -hmm. pay pay it out of there because we're going to have a charity event there next month, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, and as I said to you, um, Eric Trump's found, does have a foundation of his own, which he has, uh, used the money for a specific hospital in New York that he cares about, that he has this personal connection to and has written checks to that hospital. And I know that has benefited specific people. I know there are things where rich people who are bad people, as you said, what were you telling me about the great Al Capone. philanthropist? Al Capone? Al Capone's a, I'm a philanthropist. I'm a philanthropist. I help people. <laughs> I feed the children. People love me. Yeah. 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 Of course, you take all this shitty money and you buy public opinion right. with a hospital and, and, and you're a, good to hookers. And, and breakfast all. for kids. You know, for the, it's right. for the kids. We got to do it for the kids, you know. Yeah. So, Every criminal knows that. Right. And and when you Gus, think Gus Fring knew that. <laughs> Gus Fring knew that you give you bring firefighters some chicken. You just do yeah. it for the for the firefighters, you know. Um 
the uh, the amazing thing to me is, you know, Hillary Clinton had 30 years of tax returns online. Yes. She had the, she the Clinton Foundation tax returns were made public. And here we have, as one person on Twitter said, it's, it's a wooden shack with do crimes here written over the door. You know, and that's the Clinton. <laughs> that's the Trump Foundation. That's the Trump Foundation. But Benghazi, blue gal. Benghazi. <laughs> And but her emails, yeah. but her emails, you know, uh, they were never going to let her become president. I think no, you they, said that, that to me today. Happen. It this is white male supremacy uh, backlash uh, against a world where white men have to share power, and this is what Assange and Putin and Trump and you know Kim Jong Un are all part of this cabal of. You know, the penis patrol is going to make sure men stay in charge. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have to to wind up. I do want to end, though, with our wonderful headline that we saw in today's paper here in Springfield. Uh, the story on the front page of the city state section. Mm-hmm. Man wanted on warrant hides in creek gets caught. Yeah. <laughs> come on. You know what? Imagine. Imagine if that were the, the if that were the worst thing that happened, and the New York Times, you know, that the Marine Dowd had to had to wring a column out of that. <laughs> if we were that country, Marine Dowd wants to just I want to shred this guy, or maybe the cops are bad. I don't know. Let's go. Let's go check that creek out. If that's all she had to write about, if she couldn't just just sit on her ass and write about how Barack Obama was horrible and Hillary Clinton was horrible and Bill Clinton was awful and live the glories that she enjoyed from 20 years ago, which is what they're all doing. Mm -hmm. Um, Imagine a cut. Now, of course the other headline from uh, right here in Illinois is that our County, our County is working to become a gun sanctuary. Yeah. And, and you understand that that is a term of art that has come up in Illinois because there are uh, state laws being suggested uh, just to ban certain weapons, require certain background checks and require uh, certain permits to open carry or closed carry or whatever. There's all kinds what of any same country would call right, reasonable, reasonable gun, gun control, gun control right. um, background checks, et cetera. And uh, there are counties that apparently have opted out of some of these state laws and have become what they call gun sanctuaries. So, because why not yeah. at the same time while you're while you're you're declaring that I have a tiny penis and I need a bazooka to compensate for it. <laughs> also see if we can't insult immigrants right. in some they way. Call it a gun sanctuary. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Because hey, that's we what love you guys. I want to say we love you guys. And we've heard from a lot of you. We've heard kind words about Drift Glass's work situation. He we're doing okay. We're gonna have to rearrange our budget a little bit. Uh we are uh looking to uh up our contribution levels. We had our best week ever last week in mm-hmm. terms of we number of listeners. We had over 10,000 people. We did. 10,000 listeners last week. 10,000 yep. people yep. clicked play on one of our podcasts. That's the mm-hmm. account that we got. And that's the best we've ever had. So, you know, if we had a dollar every time somebody clicked play on our podcast, uh, we'd be making we have $100. Blue we'd yeah. be making what we deserve. For the we have hundred dollars. We, yeah, we do. We do. No. Well, I, I would suggest that um, every one of our listeners tell one other person. But here's the problem: they all know each other. Yeah, they do. So they're going to end up talking to each other. But that's and a good thing. And then we're getting nowhere. Yeah, that, that's that's it is a good that thing. It's a, a community. Good, yeah. yeah, it's a community. And just FYI, we we have a, there, we know there's a whole bunch of news that happened this week um, with the G7 and making war on, Trude- uh, on Trudeau. Um, we're just kind of keeping this high and tight to an hour today. There were a couple of things I did want to mention. Um, one is that the woman who, who was known formerly as the Vino Vixen, uh, her name's Mary Stull, has, uh, who was appointed to the State Department two months ago, has begun compiling a list of career diplomats who are loyal to Trump. Yes. She's going over all those social media posts mm-hmm. and all the Twitter mm-hmm. of everybody looking for signs of deviating political So views. she used to be a blogger about wine. Right. And now she's right. a State Department appointee from Trump, and she uh-huh. is doing she's doing something that is illegal. Right. Right. On so many on levels. On so many yeah. levels. She is checking the loyalty to the president of the United not the Constitution, but to the, the personal, actual personal yeah. president of the United States mm-hmm. by by 
doxing them basically on the internet, checking their Facebook pages and and emails and posts and so forth. Make sure and and she's a former wine blogger. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. No. Um, I, I also want to mention that, uh, that this is the week that net neutrality died. Yep. Uh, which is sad. And the White uh, House the has Trump, broken up with Michael Cohen. They have. They told him to go go f himself. They don't know him at all. He's in the burn book now, yeah. and he's going to go down. Uh, apparently, Donald Trump routinely rips up papers that are required to be preserved. Mm-hmm. Uh, so much that their aides who were specifically assigned to tape this shit back together again. Yes, you're living in that world now. Um, there was one or two other I did want to mention. Oh, Scott Pruitt, because Scott Pruitt's always fun. Oh, my God. Yes. Scott Pruitt had an EPA aide contact Republican donors to get his wife a job. Pruitt's wife, Betsy Kettleman, which is a very inside Better, Saul, better Call Saul joke. So enjoy it. All OK. Uh, eventually worked as a temporary independent contractor. Uh, for the Judicial Crisis Network, which is a conservative PAC, uh, which is one of uh, Pruitt's Oklahoma-based PACs, which is illegal, again, and immoral and just disgusting on so many levels. But that's Scott Pruitt. Yeah. So what are you going to do? There's only one person that I consider worse than Scott Pruitt at this point on the Scott Pruitt thing, mm-hmm. and that's Paul Ryan. Yeah. Oh, Paul yeah. Ryan today <laughs> got a question in the speaker's press conference about Paul about Scott Pruitt. And his answer was, frankly, I haven't paid that close attention to it. Right. Because why would he? It's not his job or anything. Yep. It's literally, you have one job. And it's not like there are nine things that Scott Pruitt has done wrong in the past seven days that have been absolutely corrupt. But, you know, maybe maybe someday read a newspaper there, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. 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 I haven't paid close attention to it. I don't know. <laughs> he, yeah, he wins the week. <laughs> Betty DeVos came close. She reinstated a for-profit college. Uh, yeah, she a, can suck my dick. A month yeah. after the education department said that they had failed to meet their federal standards. So I am telling you, horrible. I am telling you, mm-hmm. the children know Betsy DeVos. They do. I've said this before. I had the privilege of helping to run a Scholastic Bowl competition with seventh graders last year. And one of the categories was the U.S. cabinet. And people didn't know a lot of the cabinet members. A lot of the kids, seventh graders, didn't know who Secretary of State was. But they all knew who Betsy DeVos was. <laughs> all of them. Children of the future. And you know, huh? you know who's teaching the children well? Teachers. Teachers. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's right. God damn it. Here's, you know. And teachers. You know, we're going to sneak. A, how many Betsy DeVos's does it take? If you have three Betsy DeVos's, <laughs> and you one. cut the heads off of four Betsy DeVos's, we're learning negative numbers here, kids. Let's do it with Betsy DeVos heads. Well, it's like Hydra, though. <laughs> Two grow back, teacher. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good hey, point. That's another one. Venn diagram that one. You know. Now we're into science. <laughs> <sighs> You know what we do each I week? Do, I do think I do think that that's the case. I think that teachers put that education policy and so forth into the classroom. Oh, I'm sure of it. I'm absolutely and sure. Let what, people know just who Betsy DeVos was. And this is you know? it fills me with hope. The, the same way the Girl Scouts are yeah. taught self reliance and outdoor living skills and how to write their congressperson and how, how to, to rally. write their congressperson. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. All right. Each we love you guys. That's what I meant to say. We, I, we love we you do. guys. We do. Thanks for deep everything. breath, deep breath. Thanks for everything. Thanks for supporting our show. And let's not forget that it's National Bourbon Day. Yeah, I loved your tweet about that. <laughs> Drift Glass tweeted out our podcast address uh-huh. on the occasion of National Bourbon Day. Yeah, don't forget. You know, don't forget your favorite podcasters on National Bourbon Day. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, what kind of bourbon do you like anyway? The kind that comes in the mail. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. All right. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Jamie. Jamie was named before they knew the gender of Jamie. That's why Jamie has a gender neutral name, Mm -hmm. uh, which is perfectly fine. But... Uh, Jamie is a boy and he is a beautiful kitty, a gray tabby with white boots, clearly related to our Zeppo. Uh, Jamie has made an official statement that allowing dogs to be internet kitties is a quote, travesty. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 
strong opinions there, Jamie. You keep it up. Call your representative, Jamie. <laughs> you can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, prolefpodcast at gmail.com, or you could also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Uh, we do appreciate the post-it notes uh, slapped onto a check for eight bucks or you whatever do. you have. That's so efficient and, 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 and fun. And don't, don't, be, don't feel like you have to be a perfectionist no. on that score. Uh, some people have sent very lovely cards to me over the years. My birthday is... Uh, one month and two days away, and um, I do have a couple of cards up on. I reserve the right to put your birthday cards up on my bulletin board yes. if you send me a birthday card. All right, yes, does. and I do. I put them up there. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately one percent of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal, Patreon, GoFundMe, and postal address information is all there at proleftpod.com. Uh, and I do want to let people know if you decide to give on Patreon how that works. You can give a dollar a month on Patreon. It's it's easy. They'll charge it to your credit card. They charge it once a month at the beginning of the month, and then they take out the money that they use to pay for that service, a percentage, and send the rest to us at the beginning of every month. Um, PayPal, we have access to immediately. Your check in the mail, we have access to the money immediately. And um, on the GoFundMe, they send it to us in 24 hours. So just if, if any of that makes any difference to you, it makes no difference to us, really, uh, whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, I would like to get the Patreon amount that comes every month up to a thousand bucks because that's what Drift Glass was making at his uh, previous job, um, and that would fee- I would feel then like that money was replaced in our budget. So if that is something that you would like to try try to think about doing, we would appreciate that. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, for now. The Internet Kitty is going to hold off on making any more donations to the Trump Foundation. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.